Okay, Tov, Shavua Tov. Okay, Tov. We're here on Kuf Tesvav. Om Rav Chisla, three lines down from the top. And this we saw, Meikara. So we're talking about a case where he only has Chazeres for Tibul Rishon. And on the first Tibul, Mevarach Aleh Bar Pri Adom Valachilas Mara, Fiochen. He'll be Mekayim both the uh, Mitzvah of Mara and therefore recite Alachilas Mara. And at the same time, of course, he has to make a bracha, Rishona, Birchas Hanenim, that's Bar Priyadoma, and Ul Basof Achil Chasa, Bulo Bracha. Bisuria Avdi Kiravuna, in one part of Bavel called Surya, they had the minog of being Mavarich on the Chazeris in Tibul Rishon, only Bar Priyadoma. That's the only bracha they made on Chazeris for Tibul Rishon, and they postponed the bracha of Alachilas Mara till Tibul Sheni. Rav Sheshes Breder Rav Yeshua Ovid Kirav Chizda. But the Gemara quotes a minog to follow in the footsteps of Rav Chizda and to make the bracha on the Chazeres, both on the Berachas Hanenim of Bar Priyadoma and Alachilas Mara as well. The Hilchos Hakavasi the Rav Chizda and the Gemara finally comes to the conclusion: the final ruling is like Rav Chizda. And therefore, both brachos will be recited on the first table. The Gemara adds that Rav Acha b'rei de Rava mahadar ashari rakos. Rav Acha made a very special effort in order to guarantee himself that he would have shari rakos for table rishon lafuki nafshi mipluta, so that he doesn't get involved in the machlokas Rav Huna Rav Chizda, because everybody agrees that if he has let's say, celery for Tibul Rishon, it'll make a Bar Priyadama, and then he has Chazeres for Tibul Sheni, it'll make Alachilus Mara. So he gets away without entering into the Machlokas. Here we have a note, number Vav, in the name of the Slach, that's the note of Yehuda, and he says that we should derive from this conclusion of the Gemara that Mitzvah Srichas Kavana, because the machlokas between Rav Huna and Rav Chizda applies only according to the Mandiomar, that opinion that Mitzvah Srichas Kavana. If, on the other hand, Mitzvah ain't Srichas Kavana, then there would be no machlokas whatsoever. Because ain't Srichas Kavana means that he was Yotze for sure with Tibul Rishon, even in the absence of Kavana, therefore he would make both brachos on Tibul Rishon. Now, what we want to do today is to take a look at the Hare Kedem. You have the Hare Kedem, right? Yeah. So that's on page Kuf Nun Zion, which is the equivalent of 157. And it's Simon Ayin Zion, Bedin Achilas Karpas. Now, Rav Salvechik is going to derive three conclusions from the Rambam regarding Tibul Rishon. The Rambam writes, Perkhes Alochabez, Maskil, Umavarach Bori, Priyadoma, Lokech Yerek, Umetabal, also Becharoses, Vioch Kezayis. So the first conclusion is that we have to eat a full kezai's worth of karpas, of Tibul Rishon. Second conclusion is that it has to be dipped in charoses. And finally, that each one of the members of the household has his own personal obligation to eat a kezai's of the priyadom of the Tibul Rishon. And I goes my money on this Rambam, Os Dalid comments that Kizai is there any other mahu. Where did the Rambam get this conclusion that the first Tibul, which is Latmia Satinokos, in order to arouse the curiosity of children, has to require requires an Achil of Kizai? The, the Magid Mishnah also mentions that comment. Apparently, what we should derive from this Rambam is that the Takon of Tibul Rishon, even though 
the backdrop, the background, the motivation for this uh, Takana was Hekera, but nevertheless, the Takana itself is that we should eat a Yerek, in addition to Mara. And Achila requires a Kezayis. So when Rabbana, they made a Takana to require an Achila of a Yerek, in addition to Mara, and you can only fulfill that Chi of Achila by eating a Shir of a Kezayis. And what's interesting here is that we always assume that the first table is just sort of like a mechanical act. You know, it's just a, it's just a technicality. It's not, it doesn't have any status to it. And uh, it's only to achieve that goal of, you know, why, you know, the children are asking, why are we doing a table before, before the Suda? But in the Rambam's frame of reference, we're elevating that first table to a new status, it becomes one of the one of the mitzvahs of achila, uh, or maybe not a mitzvah of achila per se, but an obligation to eat a yerek. And if it's an obligation to eat a yerek, if that was the nature of takana, and that was its definition, then we require kizayis. And if that be the case, we understand why the Ram requires tibul becharoses, because. Any mitzvah of achila in the nighttime requires tibul becharosis. For example, matzah, korech, moror, and now we're going to add tibul rishon. All of the above require dipping in charosis. The only exception to that rule is when the Migdash stood, the carbon pesach could not be dipped into charosis because there's alocha in. Korban Pesach, but of Achila, Achila Sabosar, Velo Dover Achir, not combining anything else with the Achila Sabosar. And when we do Kricha, according to the Ramam Korech, we're going to wrap up the Mats and the Murrah. And at the time of the Migdosh, we would not add the Pesach. The Pesach, the Ramam says, would be eaten separately. So you had an achila of the Korban Pesach and a kricha of matzah mora without Pesach. Because the Pesach has to be eaten by itself. Now again, getting back to Karpas, the first table, that requires an achila. The Takara was that you need an achila. And ein achila pokos mikizayas. And not only that, once it's elevated to the status of an achila, then like all other achilas of the night, with the exception of Bosar Pesach, we require Tibul Becharosis. Now, for those who disagree with the Rambam, then it would seem that there's no need for every single member of the household to eat his or her own karpas, own tibul rishon. And certainly there's no reason to require a kezayis, nor to require tibul becharosis. So the reason why the Ramam requires that every single member of the household have his own personal karpas is because the way the Ramam understands takon, it's a chobos achilo. And if it's a chobos achilo, then everybody shares that Chobos Achila equally. But if we accept that goes my money, it's against the Rama. There's no Chobos Achila of Karpas. There's no requirement of Kezayis nor of Charoses. And it's only to arouse the curiosity of the children at Keira, Kedesh Yishlu Atinokos, then it's logical to assume that only the Balabayas is going to do the Tibul Rishon and eat a Chatzis Zayas of Karpas. Because all the other shinuyim, all the other changes that are implemented on this night are implemented by the Baal Bais alone. For example, we're going to talk, and that's going to be the next simon on page Kufnun Tes, which is called Akira HaShulchan, and that's only the Shulchan in front of the Baal Bais. And that's enough to arouse the curiosity of the children. There's no need to require each one of the members of the Shulchan to have his own his own Akira. 
And therefore, it makes sense that chatzis zayis of karpas could be eaten as a shinui by the balabayas. I guess all eyes are on the balabayas. If he's camera shy, he should not be leading the seder. So the Rambam says, in regard to Akiris HaShulchan, it's only Lifnei Misha Omer HaGod. Now we make a brach of Bore Priya on Karpas, and we have in mind to patter up the Mara. And everyone at the table has the bidding of eating a Karpas, but for a different reason, not because of the mitzvah of Karpas, of Tibul Rishon, that's according to our sheet against the Rambam, only incumbent upon the Balabites. Why is everybody eating their own karpas? It's only because of the problem of birchas hanenim, that we want to get a bracha up and running to bridge it until he eats the marar, so that he doesn't need to make a bar priyadam on the marar. And the Rashbam writes, Pshita hecha de'ika shah yirakas mevarcha shah yirakas bari priyadam. And the Rashbam says, Hachi Shapir Tfei Shivarak Bar Priyadom at Tchila. The Ainu Bracha Ruilahem, the Potter Esamara, Bibrechas Bar Priyadom, Akivar Halachazer Salachilus Mar. So, in other words, he wants to get the Bar Priyadom on the Yerek and not on the Mara. So the Mara enjoys the benefit of the Bari Priyadoma that he recited with Tibur Rishon. And this has to do with a principle called Ein Osim Mitzvos Chavilos Chavilos. So we said that, you know, there's a problem of Birchas HaMitzvah plus Birchas HaNenim on the same, on the same object. You know, in Matzah, we try to argue that there are two different Matzahs, if you remember. And here we remember that in the piyutim that were authored by Rabbi Yosef Tov Elam, he writes, Why does he start with Shar Yerokos? Liftar Chazeres Shal Mitzvah Bracha Ruil. So then when he gets the Chazeres, he doesn't have the responsibility and the obligation to recite a birchas hanenim. He already did so on the first table with the bar priyadama, and all he needs is a birchas hamitzvah. And that we saw the Tosas quotes of Yosef Tovel. Now, there's a locha called tibul b'mashke. All right, if you have, let's say, vinegar or salt water, and you do a table of a yerek into them, then you're obligated in tilas yadayim. This has to do with tuma mitara. So yadayim shnios, and he should be mitara's yadayim, because otherwise he might passel truma when he comes in contact with yadayim onto the truma, so therefore he does the tilas yadayim. Now, it seems that the Balabayas is going to wash his hands and eat the Yerek. But according to the Rambam, the Shara Mesubim also have to eat the Yerek. And the reason for that is, well, according to the Rambam, because of Mitzachilo, but according to the other postgame like Hagos Mamonios, it's because you want to patter up the bar priyadam for the mar. Now there are dinam of tuma vitara here that are a bit more complicated. They're out of our reach. That once he does a table of one Yerek, and table meaning he dips the Yerek into a Mashke, 
then that he does as part of the Sipri Yitzis Mitzrayim and perhaps the uh, <clears throat> the Mashke is a, a Zecher for you know the tears or whatever it is it's part of Sipri Yitzis Mitzrayim so that's fine that that is a requirement for the Baal Haseder, so to speak, the Baal Bites. For the other people, according to Auerman, against the Ramah, they're only eating a Yerik in order to recite a Bar Priyadoma. There's no need for them to dip that Yerik into a Mashke. Because every Yerik, with or without a Mashke, requires a Bar Priyadoma. So whereas the Balabais himself is going to require Tibul Bamashke, and therefore he's going to require Natilas Yadayim, and the Mashke here is either Chometz or Meimelk, that's all part and parcel of the mitzvah of Sibritis Mitzrayim, that's a responsibility that's incumbent exclusively on the Baal Haggadah, the Baal HaSeudah. Because Hekel Tinokos is only a requirement on the Omer Sagoda. The other people at the Sauda, according to our Minig, will require Achilas Karpas, but they don't need to dip it into a Mashke. They're only using the Achila of the first table for an excuse to make a Bar Priyadoma. They could take any Eric. It could be a dry potato, a dry carrot. And there's no need for them to do a Tibul Bamashke. Of course, the purpose of the Tibul of Mashke is for Sipritis Mitzrayim. And we said that as far as that's concerned, all we need is the Baal Agada. So this Seder night, you can make an announcement at your Seder that everyone, you know, you pass around the potatoes or the uh, celery, whatever you're passing around, and tell them they don't need Tibul of Mashke. I wouldn't do it because uh, you'll make a whole raucous there. You know, they'll... Uh, Now, Rav Soloveitchik wants to add another nafkamina that according to the Rambam, there's a din of Achil of, of, of Tibul Rishon, a Kezayis of Karpas. And we need Tibul in whatever may, according to the Rambam, in the, I'm sorry, in Charosas. And also, according to the Rambam, every single person at the table is obligated in Achilas Kezayis of Karpas. Then another nafkamina would be Haseba. The Rambam should require a seba for the special mitzvah of Achilles Karpas. And in fact, the Avudraham is of that opinion that Karpas requires a seba. Apparently, Avudraham accepted the Shittas of Rambam that there's a din of Achila of Kizais and Karpas, a of Achila that's incumbent on every single member of the household. And therefore, it's not just Latmiya Satinokas, but it's also a separate mitzachil and it requires Heseva. Now, according to Alaminik, the purpose of Tibul Rishon is not Achila, but rather Latmiya Satinokas, just a technical act, and it doesn't require Heseva. Heseva is only by Achila, but there's no Achila. The Rambam writes, Maschil Mavarech Bore Pri Hadom. What does it mean, Maschil? You know, Maschil implies that he's beginning the Haggadah. He's beginning <coughs> say there <their> Alila <coughs> with Bore Pri Adama. That's not so. He needs a Bore Pri Adama as a Birkas Hanenim. What's the Maschil? What's the Rambam trying to emphasize here? So Rav Salvechik has an amazing Chidush here. And he says that the Bar Priyadam, in addition to being a Birchas Anenim, it takes on a new status as part and parcel of the Seder. And that's again according to the Rambam that Karpas is a mitzvah And not only that, even if we reject the Rambam, we still could maintain that the 
Tibul Rishon is part of the Sipri Tzis Mitzrayim insofar as it's meant to arouse the curiosity of the children. Why are we dipping a Yerek before the Suda? And it could be that since the purpose of dipping the, the first Yerek before the Suda, is to arouse the curiosity of the children, that itself injects it into the framework of Vigadat al-Bincha. And now, once you do that, you want to make a Bar Priyadama as part of the Achil itself. What do I mean? It's not just the regular classic Mati or Birka Sanenim, Kol Anenim in Olam HaZebel HaBrachli Yumal, but rather becomes a part and parcel of the Seder Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim. And that's the Mitzvah of Karpas. Since we're eating the Karpas and dipping it before the Suda to arouse the curiosity of the children, that becomes part of the Mitzvah of Sipur, of Vigadatul Bincha. And therefore the Bar Priyadama takes on a new status. It's part and parcel of the mitzvah of Karpas. And it's Koveya, the Tibul Rishon, before the Suda. And that's going to arouse the curiosity of the children. The Tur writes in Simon Tovpe Dalin, in the name of his father, the Rosh, that Bori Priyadoma <clears throat> on Karpas could be recited even if he doesn't eat anything from the Karpas. And that's in a, uh, an argument against the Bala Itur. Bala Itur is of the opinion, which is intuitive, that the Bori Priyadoma has to be preceded by a Te'im of some sort. You got to eat from it. And the Tur says no. And he equates it with the Birchas mitzvah. And therefore, just like in a Birkas Mitzvah, you don't have to taste anything. Here too, you could be Mavarech, even though he doesn't taste. Wow. Could you imagine making a Bar Priyadama on Karpas and not eating anything? That seems to be the Tor Sheet in the name of the Rosh. And the reason for that is because Bar Priyadama takes on the status of a quasi birchas mitzvah it's part of the tibul, and therefore whether you eat from it or not is irrelevant. And this is an amazing overlap of birchas hanenim and birchas mitzvah where birchas hanenim becomes a birchas mitzvah. This is very similar to what Rav Salvechi used to tell us in the name of Rav Chaim that on Kiddush, well, uh, Shabbos, you know, the Bari Priya Guffin is part and parcel of the Kiddush. So even though you might give out the wine to other people to drink, and you yourself are not drinking, you don't, you don't have to worry about the Bari Priya Guffin, because the Bari Priya Guffin becomes integrated into the framework of Kiddush. And now we're saying that the Bari Priya Doma becomes integrated into the framework of Sipri Yitzis Mitzrayim. In Orachim Simon Tov Ayin Gimel, the Mogen Avram writes, "Umavarek Bar Pri Adama Kodem Atibul, Kedei Shiyehe Over Lasiyosan, for who had Din Bamar." Wait a second, he's talking about Bar Pri Adama, and he's talking about Over Lasiyosan. Over Lasiyosan is only applicable to a Birchas Mitzvah. And he wants the bracha to be before the actual tibul. So it's not enough that you do the tibul and then you make the bar priyadama. You should make the bar priyadama and then do the tibul. And he says this in the name of the Maril, one of the great pillars of Ashkenazic Psach. 
Now, if this bracha, Bar Priyadom, is on the Achila, so you should do the Tibul first and then recite the Bar Priyadom. And yet, the Maril says just the opposite, that the Bar Priyadom should be recited before the Tibul. And he invokes the concept of over Lassiyosan. So why is it that the brach is before the tibul? So the answer is that if bar priyadama would be a berchas hanenim, then first do the tibul and then recite the brach when you're ready for the achila. But the brach of bar priyadama on tibul rishon is not like berchas hanenim, but it's part and parcel of the suda, part and parcel of the seder of tibul rishon. Therefore, the Bar Priyadom has to come before the Tibur because it's not a Birchas Anenim, but a Birchas Mitzvah over Lassiyosan. <clears throat> and that's what we would medaik in the Rama Maskil Mavarek. Now, in Morar, when we do Tibur Becharoses, then this is what's called Zechel Etit. And he has to make the Baruch of Achilles Mar before the Tibul. So the Bar Priyadova before the Tibul Rishon and the Al Achilles Mar before the Tibul Sheni. And in both cases, we're implementing or applying the principle of Overlassiyos. So we have now another nafkimina in our diak of maskil umavarech that the bracha should come before the tibur, and that's the bar priyadom. The Rama writes that bizman azeh she'in lanu karbon achar mavarech shemavarech amotzi lechem chos mavarech alachilus matza umitabel matza becharos as viocha. So if we apply the <clears throat> my real reasoning here, then he should do the uh, he should do the tibul after the brach, right? He says hamotzi lechem, then he's mivarech al matzah, and then mitabel because. Over Lassiyosan requires over Lithilas Asiyosan before you begin the mitzvah. And the mitzvah itself begins with Tibul, Tibul Becharosis. So we said over and over again that the brach has to come before the tibul. Like we saw before, umavarech alachilus matz, etc., etc., umetabel becharosis. But here the Rambam is saying, with regard to Korach, Korach, where we put the matz and the mar together and we dip it into charosis before the brach. The Ram is inconsistent. He should have said that he should wait with the table until after he recites the bracha. So it could be that Pismana bias, everything is tuffled to the Pesach. He says, "Ein chiv shall heker be'atibul matza umor." So 
So I guess when you have this primary chiv, this colossal, gigantic chiv, which is called Pesach at the time of the Migdash, then somehow the heker of Tibul B'Matzu Mara sort of loses out. I call bottle of Pesach. And therefore we go back to the general rule not to be mafsik between the bracha and the achil. So he does the table before the achil. And that ends our discussion here of Simon Ayin Zion.